art, they say, is not just that which you see, but in fact, for many different interpretations, it evokes in others. Contemporary art in its varying forms have come to find a place in some of the most carefully curated spaces, one of which is the Oda Art Gallery in Lagos. Um, we see the shapes and the, the different circles and the different um, dials. And Sunshine, the gallery manager, talks me through some of the curated works ahead of a solo exhibition with Nigerian visual artist Ayo Lagbolahon's themed works a visual manifestation of an emboldened generation whose creativity, innovation and exposure have redefined different facets of African culture. The artist himself did not use colour prior to 2020. He actually lost his sense of colour for two years. This scheduled exhibition is just one of many the gallery curates. We want to tell stories about artists that reside in Africa, ultimately. We started with Nigeria and we said to ourselves, okay, we want to deal with mid-career to establish artists that live and reside here. And then also within West Africa, Africa itself and its a diaspora. From themes around social commentary to identity and environmental change, the gallery places focus on conscious artworks, as well as the cohabitation and interaction between interior spaces and art. And so these artists, um, they all have their different uh, uh, curatorial ideas of what they want to show, but they don't know how to communicate it. So for us, it's, it's ultimately to put those things together and put them into our space. Their entire experiential journey goes beyond just viewing the artworks. A knowledge for gallery is approached with intentionality. When they walk into the space, they are met with different things that pique all different senses. So from when you walk in, you have the smells of the space, we have these beautiful incense to the sound for the music. Sometimes we have food and we have drinks to accommodate taste, and then you have the visual part of it. So all these different senses are piqued, and you often feel as though you're in a different universe when it comes to experiencing the art. Um, it's important for us to have all these different senses filled so that the art itself is elevated. The objective is just as clear at the Rayleigh Gallery in Lagos, where a wide range of contemporary artists are represented. We have Marcelina, she works with fabric and textiles from discarded materials. We have Tonia, she's a painter. We have um, Ayobami Ogumbe, he weaves photographs. We have Nick Nonso as well, who works with photography. So we just work with different artists across different mediums. People are drawn to different forms of arts. You know, we've had exhibition openings with over 500 people. So whether the exhibition is painting or installation or photography, people just turn out for these exhibitions. And this just goes to say that, you know, they're curious about this art. They just want to learn about the artist. They want to follow through with the artist's um, journey. So I'll just say um, for every form of art, there's an audience. an application, a means of communication or visual expression where you can, of course, uh, uh, look at various aspects of life. Yes. Oliver Nwanwu is an artist and the founder of Omenka Gallery in Lagos. He also carries on the legacy of renowned Nigerian painter and sculptor Ben Nwanwu. As former national president of the Society of Nigerian Artists, he speaks holistically about some of the challenges within the industry. Many would argue that it may not necessarily be the government's uh, function to fund, but then government can make uh, extant laws that of course will support the development of visual arts in Nigeria. Uh, for instance, you could have tax rebates to companies who want to support the visual arts. You know, that is a great incentive. But there's also the laws. The laws are not uh, necessarily supportive of visual arts development. For instance, 
He would want to see laws that will ensure that artists get uh, a bit of royalties second from the secondary right sale of their works. I think that's very important, and it will be it will ensure that uh, even when artists pass away, their beneficiaries, you know, are able to uh, benefit from their estates. So I think that's extremely important, and I think that, of course, is a, is a changing dynamic that will be uh, a, a major changing force. The fact that we've not been able to map our industry, for instance, you know, is a, a major problem. You couldn't go to the Federal Bureau of Statistics to find out exactly how much the visual arts sector is worth, for instance. And without that, then you're not able to outline the various opportunities for investors. The bottleneck of heavy import duties and taxes imposed on artists for exportation of their works, as these account unfairly for huge chunks of their earnings, is also highlighted. But while challenges exist, there have also been some successes. We've got uh, major um, uh, events like Lagos Photo, like the Artex, you know, where I'm even able to bring a lot of visitors, you know, to know they've placed a. Uh, um, the Niger on the world cultural map. And in that sense, I'm proud about uh, the achievements of the auction houses in Nigeria. Uh, they've tried their very best in uh, increasing value for Nigerian art. I'm proud of some of the corporate institutions like Access Bank, you know, who've supported the visual arts and, of course, continue to do so. There are so many galleries and galleries that are funding um, little, smaller businesses like ourselves to to host all these beautiful pieces and host all these different artists because within Lagos alone, there are thousands of very talented artists that are looking for homes to showcase their works. And so the more businesses that open, the more spaces there are to host these different artists. And even for educational purposes, it's, it's a better way for them to understand business practices in the, in the art industry as well. But not all artists have been embracing of representation either by choice or due to the respective nature of artistic expression. From canvas paintings to murals and costumes, the Flying Bushman's art is multifaceted, yet quite niche, and he has worked independently over time. This, uh, like a number of my words, tend to pay homage in some ways to Bielsa, that's where I'm from. And my first time back there, I remember seeing the sky at night and it was all red from all the oil drilling and the flares from. And so I created this in a reimagining of a more dramatic portrayal of that uh, skyline at night. I think I'm proud of how much I can see my work travel and move around the amount of places that they are and, um, yeah, and the iconic places I've gotten to work and people that have my work. And. For artists like the Flying Bushman, the wins have also come with some downsides. I would like to see more support. I would like to see more artists communicating with each other and you know creating a kind of union to what we believe our value is. Because if I say a price for something and a bunch of people out of desperation are willing to go 10 times lower, you know, it just creates that... Imbalance. Imbalance. Yeah. Right. So this um, is a table made by a Senegalese artist called Usman Mbaye. Okay. And he, used, he uses galvanized iron, uh, discarded materials to make these beautiful functional pieces, but also pieces that are pieces of art in themselves. So these come in different colors and shapes. You can have smaller subsections of these uh, tables. And then in the back, you could also see some consoles, some little uh, side tables as well. And he really is very multifaceted. From functional to wearable art, it is so easy to laud and appreciate the creativity and out-of-the-box thinking that abounds. Just as you will find with Ronke Ladipo's work, her signature padlock handbags convey a range of societal and environmental messages while also making for distinctive fashion statements. This one here is just women supporting women. You know, you have women resting their heads on the other shoulder of another woman. 
And here is the, of course, the symbol of the key, the keyhole, the padlock. I like to always consider my bag as a attention-seeking bag because it's a conversation starter. Every time I carry the bag, that's the first thing people see. They ask me, what's this? You know, they're curious to know. My style of art is inspired by the environment, um, the environment at large in general, and different objects, you know, like padlocks, Rubik's Cube, uh, Fulani pouch, or even the royal cards, you know, I get inspired by so many objects. And um, the first padlock bag was inspired by a rigid padlock. I found it um, on the floor and this rigid padlock um, has been very iconic for me because it had like a symbol called me and you, you know, two people holding each other, you know, and that for me is like, um, it's, it just, it's about love, you know, care for the environment. It also inspired using recycled materials and reducing the amount of plastics we use in the society. I think we need more structure for um, local artists. We need more support from the government, you know, um, just more in general. We need more support. With the evolution of times and trends comes the emergence of the digital art space. And creatives like Eisenwerke have embraced the opportunities it presents for the future. Truth is, the future is scary. Um, and this is why I say it's scary. Before I, before I embraced digital, I had to face some fears. Fears are like there are apps called Mid Journey. Um, Mid Journey, all you need to do is type in a few words, prompts, and within seconds, Mid Journey will bring out an amazing masterpiece. It can be realistic style painting, impressionistic style painting, it can be photorealistic. What an artist would spend a month or a week doing, an AI generated computer does that in a split of a second. At the end of the day, if a client walks into an art gallery and sees amazing art, the, the, art, the, the client is not gonna ask, how did you create this? Oh, I love this, I am buying it. Whether it is digitally created, whether it is AI generated, they don't care. So that sort of shook the art industry. But truth is, the world is going towards a space of digital and AI. So what you can, what I can best do is to see how to merge my understanding from being a traditional artist and how I can apply digitally and how I can make use of the AI technology and enhance what I do. Of all Nigerian contemporary art space has come a long way. And in spite of the existing hiccups, the artists say there is so much to be proud of. In relation to my own art, I'm proud that uh, I've been able to sustain my father's legacy with the best of my ability. I'm proud that uh, of my 11 years I served as uh, president of the Society of Nigerian Artists, which was established since 1963 to engender the highest professional standards in the practice and teaching of the visual arts. In my time, I was able to increase the number of exhibitions. We increased our membership. Uh, we were able to structure properly, of course, rebrand the society. So I think that uh, that's one of the things I'm very proud you know, of. I see an increased level of tourism um, where people will be coming in just to see new pieces of art by really beautiful um, and, and hardworking artists that reside here. And also really look at the history of things that actually happened here. Pieces that were taken away during slavery are going to be brought back to Nigeria, are going to be hosted and protected. Anybody that comes across my art, let them have hope. Let them see a piece that will seal their soul, that they will say, oh, there is still beauty in the midst of this chaos. Be Olawi for Arise News.